Hey everyone, today's Geeky Acrylics video is going to showcase one of my recent pet portraits. Now this was filmed from my PS4 from a live stream painting session. Uh, you're going to notice that the image is mirrored and I'll post a picture of the reference picture and um, at the end I'll also show you a picture of the finished underpainting so that you can see what it looks like. Uh, the non-mirrored version of it. Um, but for this particular video, it doesn't really matter if it's mirrored or not. This is basically just to talk about the underpainting and why I chose to do an underpainting for this particular portrait. Um, I have done some in the past, and I will link those videos to you up at the top here in case you want to check those out. Kind of going more in depth about the purposes for um, doing an underpainting. But this I just want to show you how it can be helpful for complex uh, lighting situations. I haven't really been doing an underpainting for all of my my pet portraits. I mostly stone for um, people and certain landscapes but I decided to do it for this one because the lighting was pretty daunting in the photograph but I wanted to keep it just like the photo reference that I was using. Um, this is a pet memorial piece and it sometimes can help you to lay your your values out on the canvas before you actually put down any color. Uh, so the reason why I did this was coming at a, a blank white canvas, it can it can kind of, you know, mess with your eyes a little bit having a solid white canvas and there's just all, all this open white space. So yeah, getting your values can can be a little daunting. So what I did here was I laid out a basic sketch, a basic sketch in graphite and then I just did a light coat of gesso over top so I have a really faint outline here and from there I took a burnt sienna wash I'm basically just laying out the lights and the darks I'm getting all that white off the canvas and that's you know recommended in a lot of situations you know artists will tell you you know get the white off the canvas whether you're working in digital or a traditional medium so that's what I'm trying to do here I just want to make sure that the canvas is completely covered so even the areas that look white aren't really white and this is showcasing where my lights and my darks are going to be so that when I go to lay out my color I'm not you know constantly flipping between my resource my reference piece and the actual painting I already have it marked where the shadows are going to go. So when I do my base coat, it's it's not going to be a, a real struggle because my values are basically there. I have my darks as you can see in the background. I have some highlighted areas around the, the face and the little stripe down the middle. That's white and a little white piece on his belly. And then I have my midtones. Um, so it's kind of hard to see maybe some of the highlights in the midtones here, but there's a, a lot of variation in the paint up close. So this is a, a pro tip if you're working in a portrait or really any type of painting where you have a complex lighting source. This is like a dog, he's laying in front of a window um, so you got the light it's kind of scattered you can kind of see where there's like you know blinds and, and certain things um, creating a bunch of different uh, shadows and and light patterns all over his body and the floor so this is really helping me I've actually already laid down the base coat uh, for the colors and it was a really quick and painless process because I already had this underpainting and in, in, in my values here so uh, hopefully you guys find this helpful so I'm just going to let the video play uh, finish out this underpainting and at the end of the video again I will show you the actual reference picture and um, the finished underpainting so that you see the the actual piece and not this mirror version here so if you enjoyed this painting um, and information I hope you will hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more art content thank you